And even this morning, we're celebrating another thing amazing. Some students that made it. They graduated and finished their high school uh, experience. And I'd like to ask them if they would come up front. I can have those four. I think we have at least four students here this morning. If there's any others, feel free to come up uh, at graduate high school. And, and Jeremy, while we're doing this, can we go ahead? I know this is off the, the cuff, but replay that uh, without the music. Maybe you can loop that those pictures back around of our graduates as they come. Come on up. And I'm going to have, uh, have the board, if they would come up as well. Board members, if you would come up here to the platform, I'd appreciate that. And uh, oh, my, how they've grown. Oh, my. Come on right up here. Don't be afraid. I promise I won't make you preach, okay? I won't make you give a testimony or a word testimony or anything like that. We just wanted to uh, celebrate you all this morning with, with a couple things. And uh, the church... Uh, has uh, purchased something for you. You got your uh, your sticker right there below. Yeah. And um, we wanted to uh, congratulate you, but also give you a, a little gift. And at the end of the service, we're going to have a word of prayer over you guys. And um, we've got some cards that Clara has, thank you, thankfully uh, separated for us to, to give you as well. And so we wanted to, again, congratulate you guys. Shay Andrews. <laughs> Emily Frisbee Terry Lehman and Nathan Olszewski board I'd like you to just congratulate them and I have uh, Lynette up here as a youth leader too if you wouldn't mind go through there and give them a handshake would you give them another thankful applause for the good work they've done <laughs> it truly is a, a blessing when uh, our students, our children, our friends, our neighbors get to this point. And uh, we as a church, we support our youth here. We're uh, not only adults, but children, uh, cradle to the gray, as I like to say. We are a ministry that ministers to the cradle to the gray. So we just wanted to thank you guys. I won't make you open those or, or have a word of testimony, but... Uh, you guys can go have a seat. I'll, I'll call you up later. Thank you. <laughs> right, go ahead and have a seat. Thanks, guys. Congratulations again, you guys. Thank you. And lady. This morning, we purposefully... That's okay. You can let that keep going, and when it's done, we can get... This morning, we purposefully celebrate this uh, accomplishment with them. It's meaningful, and we do honor them, and we um, are thankful and give God the glory, especially for these four... We know that others come to the youth services on Wednesday night that can't come on Sundays due, due to work or other obligations. But those, these, are our, these are our church kids. <laughs> you know, they, they're amazing. And, and for the rest of us, as we're going through this message this morning, um, we're not only encouraging our graduates in this next phase of life to keep focus on God. To keep that God focus, especially as they move on into this next season. Because it's so easy when we go to college or we get done with high school, it's so easy to lose focus. It's the missing link, as I say. It's as, as, as the far as the people that are missing in the church. You look around, it's our teenage, late teens to early 20s. That are, and it's not just this church. Uh, many, many churches uh, suffer for this, and, and there's a reason. And we're not going to discuss that this morning, but we need to pray for them. That's important. We need to pray. We need to continue to train up our children in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. We need to disciple. We need to continue to support them with our prayers and handshakes, pats on the back, prayer, pray, prayer. And what can we do for you? And get involved in their life. Adopt one of them. Adopt them all. Make them all your kids, your grandkids, and be part of their life. For the rest of us, again, this morning, the opportunity is here for us to think or rethink of where we are in life. It's big, important questions. Go ahead, Terry. And these are the questions that I want us to think about. Seniors, your graduates, um, adults alike, what is your purpose? What is your purpose in this life? What is God calling you to? What's he calling you to do? What do you really want out of life? 
Lord Jesus, I thank you again for the day and for the celebration that's been this service. It's, it's been a good service. Thank you for visiting with us, so the power in your presence. And we pray a, a blessing now on the message, that you would deliver it as you see fit. Speak through me that they see you, Jesus. Keep me hidden behind your cross, Lord. I just pray that something that's said today will encourage somebody, convict somebody, change somebody for your glory. And I ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, this Sunday actually is Ascension Sunday. Many of you may not know that. After Easter, we celebrate this particular day as the, the time that Jesus ascended into heaven to take his place beside God the Father as our intercessor. And it's important that we not honor our graduates, but we honor God. It's important that we honor our Lord Jesus Christ for what he's done. But we're here to honor specifically this morning our graduates. Why? Because we're thankful they've got this far, but we're also thankful for the impact that the church has had on them or what God has had on them. And we want to continue to be an impact on their life. I wish to impress on you graduates the importance of a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the most important relationship any one of us can have is this relationship with Jesus Christ. Even graduates, as you go to work or as you go to college, you cannot lose this relationship with Jesus Christ. Do not let your faith waver. Don't let your faith falter. Will you be tested? Yes, you'll be tested and you'll be tried. But you do not have to succumb to that testing and those, those trials. You can withstand the fiery darts of the evil one according to scripture having on the whole armor of God you can stay a Christian you don't have to lose your faith if you remain faithful to God God has promised also to remain faithful to you it's a two-way street he says you do this to me for me with me I'm going to do this to you for you with you I'm going to be faithful with you I admire each of our grads for different reasons. Every one of them have earned my respect in one way or one form or another. Each of them have been in my prayers. Each of them have been in my prayers, especially in their last year of high school. And as they struggle, not only with the subjects, but just, or the subject matter, but the matter of being around other people who don't believe, who don't profess, who don't serve Jesus Christ. Their struggles that they daily deal with. Continue to pray for them. Shay, Shay Andrews, you know, you have just a way about you that just beams genuineness. He's the kind of person, here I am, it is what it is, this is who I am. I like that about a person. He doesn't pretend to be anybody else or something that he's not. He asks a lot of questions, and I like questions. He asks, he's not afraid to ask the questions. You can ask his youth leaders some questions he asks. They wish he didn't. <laughs> but he's not afraid. Why? Because he has a sincere heart. I believe that about you, Shay. You have a very likable personality, and you're a likable individual. And God has a plan for you. Emily Frisbee, we're proud of you for many reasons. Mostly because you're my daughter. <laughs> no, for me personally. But there's more than that. Not just because you're my daughter. I'm proud of you because you have shown that you can stand your ground. You can stand and withstand. You can stand in your belief. You can stand as a Christian and all that that entails, being made fun of, being laughed at, everyone trying to tell you their opinion and giving you their opinion, and yet you stood and have stand and withstood the test of time through high school. We're proud of you. You've shown us that you can maintain your faith all the way through school, public school. You can do it. It's doable, and your witness has and will have an eternal value. Emily, I believe God has a plan for you. Terry Lehman. Now, what a change we have seen in Terry Lehman. At least I've seen. He's always, though, been kind. He's always been gentle. He's always been the type of person who is very compassionate. It's a joy to be around Terry. It's a joy to hang out with Terry. And anyone who calls you friend Terry, 
They're fortunate, very fortunate. Terry's the type of person that I believe would give you the shirt off of his back if you needed it. Terry, I believe God has a plan for you. Nathan Olszewski, what can we say about Nathan? He's as solid as a Christian as I've ever met as a young individual. I've never seen his faith waver. I've never seen it falter. Your strength for me that I've seen is your love for God and your love for family and your love for friends. Your friendship is priceless and your talents make me jealous. They are all inspiring. As you enjoy life, all those that are around you can't help but enjoy life. Nathan, I believe God has a plan for you. There's so much more I could say about these four individuals. What's even more amazing is it seems like I can interchange what I've said through all four of them. God has been good to them. So from again, from the bottom of our hearts, we congratulate all of you graduates. With, certainly, with certainty, I can say that God can use you. With certainty, I can say that about everybody in here, no matter what your age is. God can use you. God wants to use you. You have personal traits that can honor him and bring glory to him and advance God's kingdom. Every one of us in this place. In the coming years, God can do amazing things through you. Think about, for a minute, your personal interests. Graduates, think about your personal dreams. Think about uh, those things that you've looked at over the last four years and maybe would like to attain in the future. I challenge you to figure out your goals. I challenge you to figure out those dreams. I challenge you to figure out what it is the purpose that you have in this life. And I dare you to always look for God in those dreams and in those visions, in those purposes. Because if you do, God promises he'll use you. He promises you. I encourage you, teenagers, to invite God in, to shape your aspirations, to shape your hopes, to shape your desires. Matthew 7, 24 to 25 says this, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in and the torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. I don't know if you know anything about bedrock, but if you ever hit bedrock, you can't go any further. Not with a pick. Now here, I could take a pick and I can dig probably to almost China and, and Florida, right? But now if I hit bedrock, if I hit the bedrock, I'm done. I've got to have some kind of amazing equipment that's been created and made by man to get through that thing. It is solid. That's what we need to build our lives on on bedrock, and the bedrock, the rock, the solid rock is Jesus Christ. There's only two ways through this world. There are only two ways and two endings in human life. There are only two ways that you can respond to the call of Jesus Christ. We either accept that call and we follow him or we reject that call, turn our back and we go our own way and do it all on our own. What was the old, wasn't it Sinatra that said, I did it my way. Well, boy, did he blow it. When we do it our way, it isn't God's way, and your way won't be as good as if you did it God's way. God's way is always the best way. What we do with Jesus, what we do with his teaching determines our true destiny. We all have a destiny. Graduates, you have a destiny. You want to reach the true potential of that destiny, then you've got to follow the calling and have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Ask yourself, ask yourself as you enter this new season, what is it that you fear? What is it that really maybe shakes you up a little bit or scares you a little bit? 
Whatever your fears are, whatever they are, you can trust God to get you to the future. You can trust him. That's only, though, if you have built your house on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness, on that rock, on that foundation. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 tells us, though, this. is don't worry about anything. Don't worry about it. Instead of worrying, pray about it. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Yeah, I know he knows, but tell him anyway. He likes hearing from you. And thank him for all that he's done. Then, if you do those things, if you do those things, I've got a promise for you, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and your minds as you're in college as you're in the world, or as you're doing whatever, working, he'll guard your mind and your heart as you live for Jesus Christ and in him. So I'm so thankful that we don't have to worry. I don't have to worry where my next meal is coming from. Thank you, Lord. I don't have to worry that I'm going to be able to put my head down on a pillow tonight. I don't have to worry. Now, I don't know about my car. I might have to worry about if it makes it or not, you know. But you know, even in that, I don't got to worry because God has my best interest at heart. I could run out of gas. I could be in an, in an accident, God forbid. I could have something malfunction on the car and leave me stranded on the side of the road. But you know what? That's okay because God's still in control. God's got his, me looked after. I don't have to worry. Now, I've got a wife who does enough of that. I don't need to worry. I'm just going to trust God. I'm going to trust the Lord. It just amazes me. Marion, we trusted the Lord, and you're here this morning. We totally believe God had a hand in what happened. Can't say she didn't worry a little bit, but we trusted the Lord, didn't we, Pam? We trusted the Lord, each and every one of the family. We just trusted in God. To worry is actually to doubt God's promise. Hmm. I don't want to doubt what God has said. I don't want to doubt God's ability. And God has promised me. Instead I, of worrying, I get counsel from God. I, I'm counsel by God and trust in him to take care of my every need. I can tell him, and he hears my prayers. We thank him for the past blessings of his answers to prayer. I thank God for his past blessings to the answers of prayer. Well, if he's blessed me and he's answered prayers in the past, what's that tell me about the future? If he did it then, he's the same yesterday, today, forever. He can answer them in the future as well. Because of those past answers, we know, we know God can answer our prayers in the future. These next few years, graduates are going to be some of the most freest, the most opportunity-filled years that you'll ever experience in your entire life. Wish we could kind of, adults, get them to understand that, huh, you know? So I caution you, though. I caution you to use your upcoming freedoms wisely. Use them, the opportunities that come your way, wisely. Be careful not to stand on the other side of these coming years. Go ahead, Terry. And say something like, oh, man, I wasted it. I wasted the chance I had in college. I wasted my late teens, my, my early 20s. I blew it. I blew it. I could have made a difference in my world. And many of us adults can tell you that we felt that way at one time or another. Don't feel this way. Don't go through the torture. Instead, savor these years. Savor these years and make the most out of them. Seek to know God and make him known. Seek him and help others find him. If you use your life for God's glory, he will take care of you. Amen, church? Now, I know it's easy to get sucked into this post-high school lifestyle of self-interest. 
You see it all around you. We see it. I know you see it. You're one of the most intelligent groups of a generation that's come. But many of your friends, many of your friends, graduates, are going to be doing their best to try to shape and fill this God-shaped hole in their soul. Many of them are going to be out there trying to fill this God-shaped hole with stuff. They're going to try to fill it with school. They're going to try to fill it with success, with money, with popularity, with drinking, with sex, with tech, with toys, with you name it, whatever it is. They're going to do all they can to fill this God-shaped hole with stuff, and it doesn't work. It won't work. It can't work because there's only one thing that can go into that God-shaped hole, and it isn't a thing. It's a person. It's a trinity. God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He wants to live alive in you through the power of his Holy Spirit, and he wants to make a difference in your life, and he wants to take care of you. He wants to bring you true happiness, and it only comes by knowing and having a living, alive relationship with him. True happiness doesn't come from worldly pursuits. All the money in the world can't buy you happiness. But how many of us would like to try? I, you know, I guess I... But it can't. We know that. Watching a show not long ago about the billionaires in America. Billionaires? My goodness gracious. Of course, Gates is one of them, right? The billionaires. What they're doing, they're trying to give their money away. And I'm thinking, like, why are they giving their money away? Taxes? Eh, maybe, probably not. Why are they, they're doing good. I'm not taking away from the good that they're doing. But what are they trying to purchase? To feel good? I ah, maybe feel, sure, it makes you feel good for a while. That feeling goes away because it's an emotion. Emotions do this, up and down, up and down, up and down. But not this relationship with Jesus Christ. It, it doesn't go away. I'm not talking about a feeling here. I'm talking about a relationship. I'm not talking about something that is here and gone. He here and he's here and he'll stay if we allow him to stay. He doesn't go. He brings the true happiness. Look at Psalms 37, 3 through 6 with me. It says this, trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. It's not just the doing good. It's the trusting in the Lord that's important also. And look at then if you do this, you trust the Lord and you do good, then you will live safely then you will live safely. Not might. You will live safely in the land. And not only that, guess what? You're going to prosper. Graduates, you want to prosper? Trust in the Lord. Do good. Take delight in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your hearts. Those desires that are best for you. Not necessarily the Lamborghini that you want sitting in your garage. He's going to do and give what's best for you. And he reminds us to commit everything that you do to him. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will. Again, it's not a maybe, a might, once in a while, but he will help you. He will help. Commit everything. Trust him, and he'll help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Trust is just the opposite of worrying. Why worry when you can pray? Why worry? We don't have to worry because we can constantly rely on the Lord looking out for us. The Lord is looking out for our well-being. Not according to Pastor Scott, but according to the scripture that we've just read. With God, we can prosper. And with God, we can succeed. Even when it looks the darkest, we still can succeed. All we need to do is commit. Commit ourselves to God. That way, when things enter into our lives that we have no control of anyway, we just trust him and he takes care of them. That way, we place the outcome of our life entirely into the hand of God. You notice I, I use singular into, you put all of our problems combined in here, and it still wouldn't come close to filling God's hand, let alone his hands. He doesn't need them both. Put all you have into God's hand, and there's no better place to be than in the hand of God. Keep God, graduates and church. Keep God front and center of your lives, and you will live a happier, joyful 
life. It's good to find also a good group of Christians to hang out with, to gather with on a regular basis. This is very important. Do not stop going to church just because you're in school or or college or or, or working. Do not stop going to church. Do not stop meeting together, the scripture says, as some are accustomed to doing. Continue to meet together. Very important. Why? Because we can help one another in our walk, in our faith walk. We can cast our burdens onto one another as we walk through this Christian life. It's good to have others as we worship together. It's good to be next to someone who's praising the Lord. You might be one of those. You might be one of these. You know, you might be one of those. It's okay. Whatever you are, it's good to do it together in a body of believers. It's good to have worship. It's good to share with one another. It helps to strengthen you, especially as you might be going through a hard time. Go ahead, Terry. See, this new season of life, I want you to see it as a whole new mission. You know, mission impossible. (laughs) If you accept this mission, you know, you don't have a choice. Life is, and always will be, until we are not. So life's going to continue on. So accept this new season as a mission. And the mission I would like you to accept it as, see it as a mission field. See is what you're doing and going out into the world as a mission field where you can share your faith, where you can tell others about Jesus Christ, and you can consistently build good relationships. Stay away from those relationships that drag you down. God didn't say hang out with them all the time, pray for them, tell them about me, but you don't have to be their best friends. If they're going to places and doing things you shouldn't be doing, don't hang out with them. Adults as well. Look at it as a mission field. Build good relationships. Share how God is the best source of your life. He is your security. He is your stability in this crazy, ever-changing world. Don't get stressed out about the changes that are ahead. I encourage you, trust God. Trust God for your entire future. I encourage you grads also to pay attention to the spiritual dimension of your life. You know, I hear a lot about that too as far as in some of this new uh, religion, spiritual, spirituality without God. It makes the person God almost. It's not how scripture describes the relationship we're supposed to have with God. You're not God. I'm not God but we have a God. Pay attention to this dimension of your life, this whole. Pay attention with this spiritual dimension without the strong relationship with God. Life is even more difficult. Christians will tell you, graduates, life is difficult as it is. I cannot imagine how any more it would be to do this without God, to go through with what we go through, Ruby, without God. How could we do it, Tom? How could we go through what we do without God? It's just so much easier to have God on your side. Doesn't mean life is easier necessarily, but it does make it easier because you've got God on your side. Doesn't mean the difficult things aren't going to come, but you can handle them better with God. God made each and every one of us, and he's given every one of us some unique spiritual gifts, some abilities, some passions that burn inside of you so you can find your own unique way of bringing light to the world and love to the little corner of your world. You can do it. You can make a difference in your world. Are you in the progress of figuring out what you want to do with your lives? It's essential. Invite God along for the process. Invite him. When you leave God out of your plans, it's like building your house on the sand. (laughs) We know better here, don't we? You can't build your house without a proper foundation. If you do, it will fall apart. So will your life. Graduates, Your lives will fall apart if you don't build this 
house, your future on God and his foundation. I challenge you, graduates, do me a favor if you think about this. I'd like to have you write out what your next four years, your goals would be. Write out your dreams that you have for the next four years, if you would. This is just a little something. Since homework is over, I'm going to give you a little homework. <laughs> Write out your four-year goals. Write out your four-year dreams. Think about it. Just write them down. And then I want you to hand them to me. I'm not going to go out and share. You can share them with anyone you want, but give them to me. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for those dreams. I want to see then in four years where you've come. And four years from now, who knows, maybe I can go back with that piece of paper or, or typed out thing and say, look, remember this? The church was praying for you. The board was praying for you. Your pastor was praying for you. And look what God has done. Look what God has done because he's got a plan for you. And you listened and you obeyed and you trusted and you didn't worry Graduates, class of 2014. Wow. Remember when Y2K was? <laughs> we didn't know if we have a 2001. Thought the world was going to melt away and my computer was going to blow up. Here we are, 14 years later. Class of 2014, it's good to have you here. I believe God has a plan for you. Go change your world. Take God with you, and you will be successful. Lord Jesus, I thank you again for these graduates. And I thank you for the message. And I thank you now, Lord, as I'm going to call them forward, and we're going to pray over them that you would just continue to use them for your glory. And I ask it in Jesus' name.